In this video, we're going to look at the expected mean and variance of the binomial distribution. If x is a random variable with a binomial distribution b, n, p, then the expected mean of x is e of x, which is mu, is n, p, and the expected variance of x is v, a, r, x, is sigma squared, is n, p, 1 minus p. These results are quite awkward to prove, and in this case, we're just going to look at what happens when n is equal to 3. So here we have the case where n equals 3. In other words, x is a random variable for a binomial distribution of 3p. I've drawn up a table that we're going to need. When x is naught, the probability that x is naught is 1 minus p cubed. This is just the binomial distribution that we've been using up to now. Probability that x is 1 is 3p 1 minus p squared. Probability that x is 2 is 3p squared 1 minus p and the probability that x is 3 is p cubed. So now when we want to work out the expected mean we will need sigma xp. So we need xp, that's 0 times that is 0, 1 times 3p, 1 minus p squared is 3p, 1 minus p squared, 2 times 3p squared, 1 minus p is 6p squared, 1 minus p, and 3 times p cubed. For the variance, we're going to have to work out the expected value of x squared, or sigma x squared p. 0 is still 0, 1, squared times p is 3p 1 minus p squared 2 squared times p is 12 p squared 1 minus p and 3 squared times p cubed is 9 p cubed okay we're now in a position to work out the expected value of x the expected value of x is sigma x P. That means adding up the P column, the XP column here. So let's add those up. 3P 1 minus P squared. That P squared should be slightly different. Plus 6P squared 1 minus P plus 3P cubed. That gives us 3p times 1 minus p squared, which is 1 minus 2p plus p squared. 3p times, I'm left with 2p times 1 minus p. 3p squared, I'm left just with so 3p I take out, I'm just left with p squared. If we look at that, we get p squared plus p squared minus 2p squared. They've disappeared. We get 2p minus 2p. They've disappeared. And that gives us just 1 times 3p. So the expected value of x is 3p. Let's look at what happens if we want the variance of x. The variance of x, you should remember, is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. Well, the expected value of x squared is just sigma x squared p minus the expected value of x can't do that properly let's put some decent brackets on it still can't do it all right sigma x squared p is just this column so let's take that column and add it up 3p 1 minus p squared 
plus 12 p squared 1 minus p plus 9 p cubed and now we have to subtract the expected value of x squared the expected value of x is 3p so we are subtracting 9 p squared We take 3p out again, and that leaves us with 1 minus p squared is 1 minus 2p plus p squared. Take out 3p, we're left with 4p, that's plus 4p minus 4p squared. Take out 3p, that leaves us with plus 3p squared. Take out 3p, that's minus 3p. Let's see what we've got here. p squared minus 4p squared plus 3p squared, they've all disappeared. Minus 2p plus 4p minus 3p. So that's minus 2p plus 4p is minus is plus 2p minus 3p is minus p. And so this is 3p 1 minus p. So we have shown that the expected value of x when we're dealing with x is binomial 3p. We have the expected value of x is 3p and the variance of x is 3p 1 minus p which is exactly what we would expect if we look at the general formula at the top of the page if i put p equal to 3 then i get can't move the mouse that's better i get 3p, 3p, 1 minus p. What does this really mean? The expected value of x is np, the expected variance of x is np, 1 minus p. It means that if we did this set of n trials a very large number of times, and we recorded the number of successes each time, and we recorded these numbers as x1, x2, x3. So we do the trials a very large number of times, record the number of successes each time, x1 successes on the first trial, x2 successes on the second, x3, and so on, a very, very large number of times. Then the mean of all these numbers, x1, x2, x3, etc., would be np, or very nearly, and the variance of these numbers, x1, x2, x3, etc., would be np1 minus p, or very nearly. Now we're going to have a look at an example. Fairly simple one to start with. A coin is spun 100 times. Find the expected mean and variance of the number of heads. Well, if x is the number of heads, then x must be a binomial distribution, 100, a half, assuming that we have a fair coin. Therefore, the expected value of x, which is mu, is np, is 100 times a half, is 50. No surprises there. And the variance of x, is sigma squared is np 1 minus p is 100 times a half times 1 minus a half which is 25 therefore sigma the standard deviation is 5 square root of 25 mu minus 
2 sigma, therefore, is equal to 50 minus 2 times 5 is 10. That's 40. Mu plus 2 sigma is 50 plus 10. That is 60. And you should know that within two standard deviations of the mean, you would expect to get about 95% of the results. We now look at another example. It is believed that 35% of people like fish and chips. A survey is conducted to verify this. Find the minimum number of people who should be surveyed if the expected number of people who like fish and chips is to exceed 60. Okay, let's have a look for a solution. If X is the number of people who like fish and chips, then X satisfies a binomial distribution, but in this case we don't know the number. So we have put N, but we do know that the probability of liking fish and chips is 0 0.35. The expected mean is mu, is NP, is 0.35n. If we want the expected number to exceed 60, then we have that 0.35n exceeds 60, and therefore n is bigger than 60 over 0 0.35, which is 171. 0.428 dot 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 and so n equals 172 since the expected mean has to exceed 60. You can find the formulae and some more examples for the expected mean and variance of a binomial distribution in your textbook S2 on pages 12 to 14.